Before we get started on these camshaft bearings, I just want to take a minute and show you guys the amount of wear on the camshaft bearing. Uh, while this looks extreme, this is very common to any LS, LQ, or Vortec engine that has 100,000 miles or more on it. And this happens to some engines bef well before 100. You can have this happen to, uh, to your cam bearings by 50 or 60,000 miles if you got strong enough valve springs on there. Uh, the whole point to this little story is whenever you're throwing a camshaft in your Corvette or in your, uh, in your LS engine, if you've already got a chunk of miles on the car or if it's already had a cam, it's usually a good idea to pull the motor out of the car, set it down on a solid surface, get the front and back covers off of it, and just throw in a fresh set of cam bearings. It'll restore your oil pressure and it'll help keep your valve train quiet. In order to press cam bearings and remove cam bearings, uh, we need access to the front and the back of the engine block. This cannot really happen on most engine stands because the engine stand is blocking access to the rear of the engine. So the easiest way to deal with this is just to set the engine down on, on some wood in the middle of an opening. So you have good access to the front and the back with a little bit of space from up underneath uh, to get the cam bearings in and are out with once they've been punched out of the block. All right, so we're changing cam bearings. The first thing we want to do uh, is we want to knock out all the cam bearings. There's five of them in total. Uh, there's two on the outside, there's two middles, then one in the dead center of the block. Uh, to knock cam bearings in and out, we will use this tool right here. Uh, it's real simple and easy to use. As we knock each bearing in, it should fall down through the center. And there's one. We can roll the crank around and make sure that uh, the bearing is able to fall down. And there's our first bearing. There's our second bearing. Until the bearing drops. There's a third bearing. There's bearing number one. And we're knocking out the last bearing already. This is a guide. You hold up flush up against the block and it keeps you centered. So when we're knocking the bearing, it's just pushing straight, not in an angle. There we go. And that is all five of our bearings. Spanked as you want to be. We're putting this back together with Durabond cam bearings. We, uh, we've never had a problem with Durabond. Uh, we've had one time with, uh, with the Teflon coat cam bearings where, they, uh, where the cam felt uh, pretty tight going in, but it smoothed out and everything was fine. Uh, so we're not using the Teflon coat this time. We're, uh, we've stepped back to just using their performance series, the CHP. Uh, for the Gen 4 LS engines, you're, with Durabond, you're going to use either CH25, CHP25, or CH25T for the Teflon coat. They're a great bearing. Um, for all SL engines, the, uh, there's multiple different sizes to the cam bearings. Do you see that where we have uh, positions 1 and 5, 2 and 4, and then 3? Uh, the way the block is made, the center cam bearing is the smallest uh, bore in the block. And then the two middles are a little bit bigger. They're like an in-between size. And then the two outside bearing bore, bore holes in the block are the largest diameter. So these cam bearings all have different OD sizes. 
so that we can take the first bearing, which is the third position, and knock it through the first hole and the second hole, and then press it into the third hole. And then we can knock the middle bearing through the first hole and press it into the second hole, and then knock the first bearing right into its hole. Uh, so for that, it's very important. They're, they come packaged in the box in their correct positions, and they're also all numbered. Uh, right here we have CHP 25, and then it says positions four and two. I don't know if you guys can read that or not, but uh, it tells you exactly where they go, so there's no mistake in them. Uh, another little thing about knocking the cam bearings in is there's two holes for the cam bearings for, uh, for their oiling. We're only going to use one, but this can go in two different ways, right? It can go with the oil hole that you're using off to one side, and then the other hole can be facing up, or the other hole can be facing down. Because these cam bearings, or because the camshaft is always trying to dig its way to China from the uh, heavy spring pressure, it's important that we clock these holes up so there's nothing but all the bearing surface there can be on the bottom to help support the camshaft. It, it makes sense to me that if we have the holes facing down, the cam will wear faster because there's less material supporting it. Uh, all right, let's get these in. The way the block is drilled for the cam bearings to get their oil, if you guys can see it, it comes out to be an elongated hole right there. Uh, if you look at the block casting, you can actually tell how they bored it right up from the center, right up here. It's bored all the way into this oil gallery. And it actually feeds the cam bearing and then it comes down and feeds the crank as well. And the hole is right up there. But the way it's drilled is it's drilled from the bottom up to here. And that's the way it is on all of the cam journals. So we have a little window from like, uh, we'll say, like 7 to 9 o'clock, where the cam bearing could see. We always want to aim for the hole in the cam bearing to be dead center. But it really matters that the entirety of the hole in the cam bearing is covering, is open to this gallery. If this hole is like three quarters of the way blocked or if it's just barely on it, then uh, maybe we're going to end up starving that one journal for uh, oil and maybe it'll take a lot of premature wear. And maybe it'll be a hot spot in the engine as well, you know, and maybe that'll be the point of failure. So it really matters that the bearings are pressed, clocked properly. And the way I like to do that is I like to hammer the bearing in just a little bit and then pull my tool out and verify that I've started right. On the ends, when you get to uh, one in five positions, it's real easy to line them up and tap them in. But for the center cam bearing and two and four positions, you gotta pass the bearing through the first hole to get into the second hole, and you don't know if it, if it moved or if it turned or tried to reclock a little bit on you. So it, it just really matters that you just knock it in one or two with one or two hits and just get it started a little bit. And then you, you shine a light in there and you examine it and you make sure it's, it's clocked right before you knock it the rest of the way in. Because it's really easy to feed your tool in from the other side and knock that bearing back out versus, you know, having it pressed all the way in in the wrong way and then trying to knock it out and then press it back in and losing your retention on the bearing. Starting with the third bearing. We always need to verify bearing is for position three. I like to put a little bit of preview on the bearing itself. First off, so the bearing never goes together dry, but uh, also to help keep it from spinning or relocating itself on the tool as it's going in, right? Like if there's a little bit of oil there, it'll help drag. It'll also help keep it from scratching on it or anything like that. We want the secondary hole always facing up.
pull our tool, we'll knock it in. Just a little bit. And we'll pull our tool out. And we'll check that clock position. We can always look down the lifter bores to understand whether we're at our spot or not. I think that looks good. Then we'll take the number two position, number two or four. Always making sure it says so. Make sure the open barrel is facing up. Put that in check. There is a margin of error to this, and the lifter or the bores for the cam bearings are a lot wider than the cam bearing itself. So it's just really cool to look at the lifter bore closest to the bearing on each side of the motor and just try to split the difference and make sure it's as centered as you can. Uh, a lot of times you can try to use the markings of where the old bore or where the old bearing was, but as sometimes as we're pressing them, we lose that. So. Okay, now we're already on the outside bearing. Uh, number one. Yes, sir. A little bit of Lucas. Secondary bearing facing up. And I guess we can check on this one too, but it's right there. Second bearing, we want to make sure it's number two. Little bit of Lucas. Because we're coming in from the front now, uh, even though the, the holes are all drilled on the same side of the block, because we're coming from the front now, it's going to seem like uh, it's backwards. So we're going to be like uh, between three and five o'clock. It's always better to check your placement a hundred different times than it is to have to back the bearing up the other way. I say this only because once we've started pressing in the bearings, you can't always push this tool in from the other side. And uh, sometimes you gotta take the tool apart, fit, fit it in from the block, get the cap in, then put this in, then stick the shaft into the block, screw it on, tighten it before you can knock it up a little bit. It's nothing that can't happen, but man, it's more work. to uh, check a hundred fucking times going in than it is to go a little bit too far and have to back up. And this is the last bearing. Make sure it's the number one. Little bit of Lucas. On um, the surface of the bearing. Box says 
all the cam bearings are in. And now, our L9H engine is back on the stand. And ready for tomorrow's crankshaft transplant.